Hello children. Well, today is the 1st of December and it really does seem a bit like winter now, doesn't it? Normally, I do my stories up at the top of the garden, but now it's too cold and too damp and too nasty. So I'm indoors in my favourite children's corner where all my children's books are. And today is going to be a poetry day and there's some poems for all ages. So if you're very little, you might like to start listening to a couple. Um, but if you're a bit bigger, maybe you would like to hang on right until the end when I've got a bit of a treat for you. So it's December and it's winter, but the best thing is to look forward to Christmas. And in the weeks coming, we will have more Christmas stories. But today I'm going to start with some poems that just seem to fit the mood for the weather that we have outside and I'm going to use one of my favourite poetry books and it's written and illustrated by Shirley Hughes who is the most wonderful illustrator and this book is called Out and About, First Book of Poems and it's got lots of poems for all the seasons. This one actually is at the end of autumn and it's called Misty. And I thought of it because we've had some very misty mornings here. And in fact, today is so misty, I cannot see across the road. Mist in the morning, raw and nippy, leaves on the pavement, wet and slippy, sun on fire behind the trees, muddy boots, muddy knees, shop windows, lighted early, soaking grass, dewy, pearly, red, lemon, orange and brown, silently, softly, the leaves down. And there we are. There's Shirley Hughes. Lovely pictures of the autumn leaves. Have you got leaves coming down in your garden? We have still got leaves on our trees and they are everywhere. But they will soon all be down and it really will be winter. This one is in the winter section and uh, it's making us look forward and you'll see to what. It's called Hoping. Grey day, dark at four, hurry home, shut the door. Think of a time when there will be decorations on a tree, tangerines and hot mince pies, a bulging stocking, a Christmas surprise. And there's that lovely picture. But we have to wait a bit for that, don't we? Another <gasps> three and a half weeks, I think it is. So that's Shirley Hughes, Out and About. And then I'm going to read you another one, which some of the older children might like, and it's called The Garden Year. And this takes us all the way from January right through to December, where we are now. The Garden Year. And this is from a beautiful book I have. It's called... The Folio Book of Children's Poetry, and it's got lots of lovely poems for all ages. January brings the snow, makes our feet and fingers glow. February brings the rain, thaws the frozen lake again. March brings breezes loud and shrill to stir the dancing daffodil. April brings the primrose sweet, scatters daisies at our feet. May brings flocks of pretty lambs, skipping by their fleecy dams. June brings tulips, lilies, roses, fills the children's hands with posies. Hot July brings cooling showers, apricots and gillyflowers. August brings the sheaves of corn, then the harvest home is born. Warm September brings the fruit, sportsmen then begin to shoot. Fresh October brings the pheasant, then to gather nuts is pleasant. Dull November brings the blast. Then the leaves are whirling fast. Chill December brings the sleet, blazing fire and Christmas treat. Doesn't have very many pictures, but they're very nice pictures. So that's a good book to buy. And then I'm going to finish off with another poem, which is a bit longer. So maybe for some of you older ones. And it's not Christmassy at all. But it's from my favourite book of poems. Well, one of them anyway. 
called Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats, and they're written by a man called T.S. Eliot. Um, but this beautiful edition is illustrated by someone called Axel Scheffler. And lots of you would recognise his drawing because he has done lots and lots of books with Julia Donaldson, like The Gruffalo and The Stick Man and lots of things you will know. So this is all about cats. And this is a very famous one. And it's about a cat who is a detective. It's called Macavity, the mystery cat. Macavity is a mystery cat. He's called the hidden paw. For he's the master criminal who can defy the law. He's a bafflement of Scotland Yard, the flying squad's despair. For when they reach the scene of crime, Macavity's not there. I'm going to stop there. That line is at the end of every verse, so why not try and join in? Macavity, Macavity, there's no one like Macavity. He's broken every human law. He breaks the law of gravity. His powers of levitation would make a fakir stare. And when you reach the scene of crime, Macavity's not there. You may seek him in the basement. You may look up in the air. But I tell you once and once again, Macavity's not there. Did you join in? Macavity's a ginger cat. He's very tall and thin. You would know him if you saw him, for his eyes are sunken in. His brow is deeply lined with thought. His head is highly domed. His coat is dusty from neglect. His whiskers are uncombed. He sways his head from side to side with movements like a snake. And when you think he's half asleep, he's always wide awake. Macavity, Macavity, there's no one like Macavity, for he's a fiend in feline shape, a monster of depravity. You may meet him in a by street, you may see him in the square, but when a crime's discovered, then Macavity's not there. He's outwardly respectable, they say he cheats at cards, and his footprints are not found in any file of Scotland Yards. And when the lard is looted, or the jewel case is rifled, or when the milk is missing, or another peak's been stifled, or the greenhouse glass is broken, and the trellis past repair, aye, there's the wonder of the thing. Macavity's not there. And when the Foreign Office find a treaty's gone astray, or the Admiralty lose some plans and drawings by the way, there may be a scrap of paper in the hall or on the stair, but it's useless to investigate. Macavity's not there. And when the loss has been disclosed, the Secret Service say, it must have been Macavity, but he's a mile away. You'll be sure to find him resting or a licking of his thumbs or engaged in doing complicated long division sums. Macavity, Macavity, there's no one like Macavity. There never was a cat of such deceitfulness and suavity. He always has an alibi and one or two to spare. At whatever time the deed took place, Macavity wasn't there. And they say that all the cats whose wicked deeds are widely known, I might mention Mungo Jerry, I might mention Griddlebone, are nothing more than agents for the cat who all the time just controls their operations, the Napoleon of crime. There we are. Lots of nice pictures. Of course, I said he was a detective. He's not a detective. He's a criminal. But he never gets found out because he's very good at disappearing. I hope you enjoyed that. We might do one of those another time. But I'm going to say goodbye for now. And next week I'm going to begin to tell some Christmas stories. So have a lovely week and I'll see you again. Bye bye.